So as we move through the civil war on Onderon, we're going to start running into some interesting troubles for the Separatists, mainly tied to logistics and troop numbers, but that raises some interesting questions about what exactly are the limitations of the droid army. Well, today we're going to take a closer look at that. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So, on paper, the droid army should be virtually limitless, with the ability to throw troops at any problem, since their soldiers can be rolled out from factories en masse. After all, that seems to be the concern of the Republic during the early days of the conflict, that the droids will simply arrive in ridiculous numbers and overwhelm any Republic defenses based on sheer numerical advantage. So... Why would the Separatists ever be worried about things like the efficiency of where they deploy their troops if they have a limitless pool of soldier manpower, basically? Well, I figured since that does tie in significantly, particularly with the end of the Civil War on Onderon, it was a good time to look into this and discuss some of the limitations facing a droid army. Let's start with the things that exist in a nominal circumstance. Assuming the Republic was not able to do any major damage to Separatist infrastructure, what is holding the droid army back from a limitless fighting force? Well, the easiest thing to point to would be raw resources. While the Separatists don't necessarily need a civilian population to draw soldiers from, neither do the Republic, they do need the raw materials to manufacture a massive droid force and the vehicles that go with them. So that's a raw basic limiter. They can only make as many droids as the metal and computer components they have available to do this. That being said, these resources seem to be pretty readily available, so it's sort of doubtful that the raw resources to produce these military forces are what would be holding the Separatists back from producing a limitless droid force. So what else is stopping them? Well, maybe it's economics and the sort of construction and manufacturing potential of the CIS. For example, you would generally likely have droids running the assembly line that are producing the droids, but the mechanics to work on these droids that are running the assembly lines in the Confederacy would likely have been called into military service to fix battle droids that had been damaged in combat instead, and the manufacturing power that would be used to make replacement parts for construction droids is likely being shifted over to wartime efforts. After all, the CIS is in a state of total war. So perhaps the equipment used on the assembly lines to produce these battle droids is aging and in need of repair, and this is slowing down the manufacturing process, perhaps causing entire droid factories to be closed for days or weeks on end, while replacement and repair are carried out on the elements of the factories. It's also worth noting that it seems like the construction for a lot of smaller elements of the military force, things like tanks for example, slowed significantly during the wartime. A lot of the equipment we see used on the battlefields during the Clone Wars by the CIS were from the days before the outbreak of the conflict being used by the member corporate groups as opposed to being manufactured for the purpose of the war. When we see manufacturing during wartime, they're either producing infantry units like B-1 or B-2 battle droids, or large experimental units like the super tank. Now, that's not to say that armored manufacturing completely stopped during the war, but it's just an interesting observation that a lot of the armor used appears to have pre-war origins. So, it could be a logistical problem with keeping these factories up and running in a state of total war. But then there's the interesting wild card here, and that's the Republic. The Republic would see the droid factories as a target just as much as the Separatists would see Kamino as a target. So the Republic might favor hitting targets that have droid factories, and this has two big downsides. The first off being that local populations would likely be significantly opposed to the construction of new droid factories around their dwellings, as they would make their areas targets for Republic strikes, be it large-scale military assaults or smaller infiltration attacks and raids by Republic Special Forces. This would make it harder to gain the public approval necessary to build new factories and manufacturing centers to support the war effort. And the public opinion of this would have only deteriorated as the war dragged on, and the chances of victory seemed smaller and smaller. 
But then there's the obvious drawback here that some of these factories were likely destroyed or sabotaged by Republic saboteurs early on in the conflict. They would be obvious first targets for Republic military forces at the opening days of the Clone Wars, so it's likely that a lot of these droid factories faced sabotage or even all-out attack in the first few months to the first year of the war. And even going on into the later stages of the conflict, factories and manufacturing centers would remain key targets for Republic attack and Separatist attacks during this conflict. So which one is it that's holding the CIS back? Well, my guess is it's a combination of all three. Some resource shortages might be slowing down the production of new droids, but more likely it's the beginning of the crumbling of the infrastructure lines needed to maintain these factories in working order during a state of total war. The CIS was pouring so much uh, really effort and work into their war effort that they may have lost touch with the home front of this conflict. That problem exasperated by Republic sabotage and public opinion being opposed to the construction of new factories would slow down the production of new battle droids, new armored units, and new separatist military assets. This puts the CIS in an increasingly desperate logistical position and forces them to make Tough decisions like withdrawing their troops from Onderon due to civilian opposition. However, at the end of the war, the Separatists still had a massive stockpile of ships and troops and war equipment, and if you'd like to learn about what happened to all of that following the end of the Clone Wars, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments what you think is preventing the CIS from fielding an unlimited number of battle droids. Do you think it's supply shortages hitting the raw resources needed to build these units? Do you think it's a logistical problem with keeping these factories up and running? Do you think the Republic is just really good at hitting droid factories with sabotage and full-scale assaults? Or do you think it's something that I forgot to mention in this video? And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars, you can let me know down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.